Hello and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Phil Galloway and today we're going to be talking through making a expressive portrait of a man using ArtRage 5 and a little bit of Photoshop uh, jiggery pokery at the end. And so at the moment, as you can see, I've got ArtRage 5. Uh, this is the desktop version running and I'm running it on my new Surface Pro tablet laptop kind of thing. And so just to give you a little brief kind of talk around the UI in case you don't know. Um, some of you may have used ArtRage before, some of you may have not, but uh, basically ArtRage is a fantastic tool for artists. Um, it recreates the flow of paint, watercolour and the textures um, within them so, so well. Um, and it's become basically a, a staple part of my, my daily workflow. Uh, for all my commissioned work, I pretty much use ArtRage 5. Um, so it's a very, very simple interface to use, but it can be utilized very professionally as well. So the, dig, the, you know, the further you dig, the more you can get out of it. Uh, but if you just wanted to use it as a sketching tool, you can do. If you wanted to do full-blown Renaissance paintings, you can do as well. So just to kind of have a little brief tour around. So on the left, you've got your tool pickers. So you start off with your oil brushes, your pencils. You've got watercolor, palette knife. Because uh, you can really push around the pixels as you use them and the paint blends together completely realistically and I come from a fine art background so it, you know, it really does react totally like real paint so it saves me getting paint all over the house and the dog and getting into trouble. So this is really good. So down here you've got your custom brushes which we're going to be touching on a little bit later on which you can create yourself or download packs from very kind people who've made them which is what we're going to be looking at later and they create uh, different kind of textures and different kind of ways that the paint reacts um, and can kind of come in very very handy with with uh, with whatever you're painting with be it landscapes and kind of leaves textures or like we're doing today skin and uh, kind of craggy skin and textures like that so over on the right we've got our color wheel which is again pretty self-explanatory you just click around if you want to change your color and then select in the bigger wheel to change it on the right hand side we've got our layers so if you would click on that it opens it up you can add a new layer in there you can delete you can set up different blend modes if, you know much like photoshop duplicate layers all these different kind of things you can even change the textures of each layer so if you wanted the paint to react differently it can do and um, going down if you wanted to bring in images to trace you could um, and then here you can bring in reference images which kind of act like a little bit of a scrapbook over on this right hand side so you can copy and you'll see that working in the tutorial as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to get started. We could either go to File, New Painting or click up here to New Painting and it will bring up this little loading screen. And so basically what you can do is you can either put in, if you know your pixels of the size and dimensions you want to work to, you whack them in there or you can go to print size on this side which is what we're going to do and so today I'm going to be creating a portrait and it's going to be 222 millimeters by 300 millimeters uh, but we're going to have a 5 mil bleed on it so we'll add 10 centimeters so we'll put 232 on there and 310 on that one and on the right hand side you can choose your pixels per inch so usually I just run at 300 it brings up very high res images, more than adequate for printing and everything. But if you did need to go bigger, you can whack that up to 600. If you needed to go lower for more website based things, you can do as well. So underneath below is where you can change your canvas and what you're actually painting on. Now the paint reacts completely different depending on what you paint it on. So as you can see, if you click in here, it can give you different presets. You can all sorts of different papers um, which you can test and try. You can change the colour of the base um, and the paint will flow differently on there. So you can have a really rough linens like uh, uh, or watercolours. However you want to use it, the paint will react differently on there. And again underneath, you can select it and change the grain size however you want. But what we're going to do is just keep it on a pretty standard, uh, I think this, this is, might even be the default one, pretty standard paper where the paint flows and it has got a grain in it and you can see the paint reacting on it but for the purpose of the this tutorial I'd like to show you how the paint blends together and using the custom brushes it's more about the texture of the paint stroke rather than it, how it reacts to the paper but again by all means have a little play in a tink and see what fits your style or what the end result you want to achieve you can change it to suit that so once you're ready and you've got it all set up you just click OK and there's your new canvas which you can move around with two fingers on the screen 
to, to play with. Again, just to kind of give you a, a little idea, oops, there's your undo button up at the top. And if you want to reset your position, you can do reset rota rotation and you can zoom back out if you want to just get it all squared up, however you want to do it. So that's pretty much the basics. So what we're going to be doing, we're going to be starting with a nice simple pencil sketch and we're going to build that up on layers with uh, using your normal oil brush, the default one, just a nice rounded brush, uh, not heavily loaded. And then we're going to build it up with some textural stuff with custom brushes and see where we go from there. So I hope you enjoy it and um, let's get to it. So first up, what we have to do is bring in our image that we're going to be drawing today. So it's very simple. What you do is you go across to refs on the right hand side and you click this little folder button and you can browse your computer for whatever image you wish to draw. So today we're going to be drawing this chap and double click and there he is and you can make it bigger, smaller, however you want to position it, right hand side, left hand side. Just with two fingers you grab it and you can move it. So what I wanted to do today was to use this this chap uh, to draw him but not do the same background not try and be too literal on the actual photo and be quite expressive and kind of come up with something a little bit hopefully more more interesting so we've got our image there so you can close off our references there so on our first layer we want to sketch him in there uh, so you can either go to your pencil tool over there and again within the, these are the stock ones that come with art rage and you've got different ones that do different things in there but for today's one we're not going to use one of those we're going to use uh, a custom brush and uh, now the custom brushes are amazing really you can make your own brushes tweak them um, by going into the settings you can go into brush designer and completely make whatever brush you want or whatever pencil tool you want and it is quite simple to use and you can, some of it's a little bit trial, trial and error or if you know specifically what you want to do but you can find out amazing things and then save it as your own personal brush set uh, but for today I've been using uh, a brush set called Door Brushes by Paolo Limoncelli um, and Paolo has been creating brushes for all sorts of different programs and they are incredible and just really different kind of stuff and on the new Outrage 5, I was finding that on some of the pencils, they were a little bit light and a little bit... Uh, I didn't find them kind of... the shading on them was, was quite what I wanted. They're very, very good. Um, so Paolo sent me over some custom brushes that he's made, and they are fantastic. So it's definitely worth a look, and there will be a link to them within the, um, the article um, uh, from the magazine. So you can hopefully have a little go and download them and see what you think. So if we go into custom brushes at the bottom and then go to your presets, this is where you can find your stock custom brushes that are already in ArtRage 5 and some of these are excellent to kind of use. And then once you've downloaded Paolo's, the door brushes, this is where you'll find them. Now he's made a set of the orange ones are the pencil ones and like I said, they're really, really good. So for this one, what I'm picked is the Simple 2B. So door Simple 2B and you can see it's changed in the corner here. So, you know, you can select your, your tool size, you change, you just rub up and down in the corner in there, or you can click in it and it will select your tool size there. We're gonna go down to bottom red, but we're not gonna go fully black because sometimes that looks a little bit fake. We're just gonna lift it up a little bit and you can have a little test. That's quite a big stroke, we don't want that. Something like that looks absolutely fine. And as you can see, it's great if you've got a tilt pen on the new Surface Pro, you can shade to the side and you can go really dark. And it's a fantastic thing and Paolo's brushes are, are really, really good and definitely worth checking out. So we'll go on now to sketch out this chap and get the composition right on the page. This is going to be a little sped up version of my process and I'll talk over some of the main bits and explain and I'll pause the video sometimes and explain what I'm kind of doing. So if we set the ball rolling and quick play. So as you can see, we've got Paolo's pencil, the 2B pencil dub uh, custom brush. And what I've done is just basically sketched out the kind of parameters uh, around the outside of the canvas of where I want to go and just loosely sketching in the character. At this stage, you can be as detailed as you want. Uh, you know, 
I sometimes like to just put the main features in with some shadows and light and dark so I know roughly when I'm going to be painting the dark bits. Other times I like to just start with a paintbrush and just whack it on and build it up from there. But for this one, because I wanted to show some of the really good brushes, the pencil tools and brushes that Paolo's got and the daub set's got, um, I thought it would be kind of prudent to, to do the pencil first. So as you can see, I'm building them up and hopefully it will look roughly like the, the gentleman there. And as you can see, it really, really does react like pencil and um, you can zoom right in and it does look, you know, very convincing. I'm not being too worried about all the detail. So here I wanted to include some origami paper elements within the portrait just to make it a little bit more abstract, a little bit more unusual and a points of interest. So I brought in another reference. Um, so just a note for the reference images, I've got these references from the website called Pixabay, which is a fantastic tool uh, for any artist really uh, um, to kind of use. I'll just pause it there and explain what I've kind of done for a second, um, just while I talk about Pixabay. Um, it's a free stock fo uh, website where you can download, there's, there's hundreds and thousands of images and you just you know tap in man, origami, whatever it might be and you can use them for your own personal use, for business use, for whatever you want. It's a great source for especially kind of body referencing if you need a shape of a hand or something like that and you don't want to go trawling through the internet or worried about using a, an image that you might get in trouble for copyright. So it's definitely worth a look, look and that's Pixabay. So just to see, I then the image, the pencil image went very, very dark then for a second. And what I did was, and I often do this with a lot of my work, is I will do the pencil sketch and then I will duplicate that layer. I will make the top layer 50% transparency. And then in between those two layers is where I'll paint. And this is basically, so you're painting on top of one of the layers of pencil, but you've always got one layer on top of that. So you can see your image very lightly on top and it just helps you guide with your painting and you'll see that although i put the brush strokes on you can still see the paint the pencil on top of it and for this initial stage of blocking in the paint it's quite handy and um, also just to note i'm using the uh, you can see in the left hand side i've just selected the default oil paint brush usually if you click into settings i usually set the loading to about nine percent ten percent um, which is more than enough for blocking in. You still get a little bit of texture on the paint, but it doesn't overload the work and become muddy if you overwork it. Uh, I keep the thinning down to zero. If you wanted to do washes, you can put that up and it's as if you're putting terps into your, your oil paint. Uh, but for this, I like a nice dry brush. I like it not to be heavily loaded. And I just block in the simple light and dark color. So we'll set the recording going and you'll see how I'm building it up. Now at this stage, I'm not too worried about getting the colors completely right. You can use your color picker, your eyedrop tool on the left in the toolbox to kind of pick colors off the, the photo reference you're using, or you can be a bit more expressive and use a bit more unusual. So sometimes it's quite good to, to color pick initially, but I like to use quite bright colors in mine and quite unusual blends, you know, for the skin tone. So um, I've just started with the, the dark kind of burnt colors, I suppose, and the shaded areas and again you can be more expressive if I was painting this from scratch without using a pencil one I'd really be blocking it in loosely and just trying to find the kind of dark meat uh, tones in there and the, the values and then building it up from there but because we're using the pencil one I can be a little bit more accurate at this stage I'm not too worried about the gaps because they'll all start to get filled in as we go through So every now and then you'll see me click the top layer of the pencils and, and hide it so I can just see what the paints, how it's sitting on the canvas and whether it's kind of working and then I'll click it back on just to see where I go from there. Once I get past a certain point you'll see that I'll click the pencil off entirely and just be working on the paint layer um, because it's filled in enough and I can, you know, I've got the bare bones of the structure of the painting there so I can build on it. So now we're starting to put a little bit of darker areas and a little bit of lighter areas start building it up and he, he's starting to come together. Again, the pencil layer on the top now has been hidden. And so what I'm doing in this, I've selected, if I just pause it there, 
I've selected the palette tool you can see and again you can change the settings on this so it holds on to paint uh, it drags it you can do it like knife flicks across it's really really clever how it does it but for this one I'm just using a nice simple smoothing and what I wanted to do was just blend the base layers a little bit together not just to cover the the white gaps but just so when we start using the the custom brushes on top the more textural brushes that you've got a good base to build on so the contours of the face kind of shine through a little bit because on the custom brushes you can make them you know semi-transparent some of them are kind of inherently transparent and so you can really kind of build it up and, and start getting the undulations of the skin and the palette knife is a great tool to kind of get your base underneath sorted before you do that so let's click it on and you can see how Art Rage, the paint blends so nicely. Some people create images entirely with the palette knife on Art Rage. They, they love doing that and, and you can get some amazing impressionistic effects with it. So it's definitely worth experimenting with. some of this was a little bit of trial and error in seeing what kind of colors I liked, how much you know darkness I wanted to be in there, just finding our feet a little bit. I suppose in a way at this stage it's working kind of a la prima like a kind of professional oil painter would do and just building it up on top of each other as if the paint's wet and you're still building up on it. There's no other layer gone on top. Obviously, once you start adding layers in, it's as if the paint's dry underneath it and you can build it up on top of that. So just tightening in a little bit, going towards a little bit more detail, trying to get those lines of the face and get his, his aging features. So again, a little bit more blending with the palette knife. And you can really start to shape the contours of the face. As you can see, the painting's starting to really take shape now. We've got the bare bones on there, the good structure. Quite happy with it so far, but I think it needs bringing to life a little bit more than the, the standard brushes can do. Obviously, you can build and build and build them up, but it is nice to use these custom brushes because they do bring some kind of unusual textures to it and can bring, really bring a painting to life. So I'm still keeping it quite loose on the base layer. I want it to be interesting and good brush strokes and solid brush work there. I don't want it to be too formal. And keeping some little flashes of color around the page always makes it a little bit more interesting. So there, there was a little pause because I brought in some reference images. So if I just pause the playback a little bit, so you'll see there on the left hand side the blossom trees this is a, uh, a kind of warm-up painting i did a little while ago uh, testing these new door brushes and i i thought it was it's quite a, a nice thing to kind of do with one of the particular brushes and um, it kind of gave this blossom effect and that's what gave me the idea for doing this portrait i thought we could maybe do some kind of fractured blossom background where the characters kind of almost blending into it so 
So what I've done is you can see on the left hand side in the tool, I'm still on the oil painting, but I've whacked up the size to 300% there. So all you do is click into the size but, um, little tab. And if you click over there and then tap in 300, you can go up to 500% on it. And that's a really big brush. And then really chunkily lay it on because then we're going to use the palette knife and this other daub brush, which is going to be the Daub Impressionist 1 brush. You'll see me pick this up in a little while, which then splinters the paint and you can get some really unusual effects kind of going on as if you're uh, almost stippling on or with the end of a hard brush or flicking it on and it kind of disintegrates the paint on there. And again, this is where the custom brushes really come into their own because you can't do that on normal ones. And it's a quick effect uh, and, and you can really go to town and, and practice and play with it and build up the textures. So it's definitely worth looking into. Uh, but I'll set, the, set it going now. So basically I've set a new layer behind the gentleman's paint, his face, and we're just going to block in the colour and you'll see me switch in a little while um, after I've used the palette knife a little onto the, it will go quite quickly, um, but onto the custom brushes and again that is the, um, it's going to be the Daub Impressionist number one. And so let's keep going and you'll see. So again really loosely just trying to block in light and dark in the background at the moment. But you can still see the way the paint's kind of blending and reacting with it. Again, if you put loaded more paint onto the brush each time, you'd really see the kind of textural nature of the brush stroke. But we don't want that yet because it does have a tendency, if you put that on too early, to just start getting a little bit unwieldy and a little bit hard to, to kind of manage. So as you can see now, I'll pause it there. I've switched to the Impressionist Daub tool. And as you can see in the corner, it looks almost kind of splintered, almost fractured particles. Um, and you can see I'm starting to press it into the blue area there and blend it. Now the clever thing with this is the harder you press, obviously you'd think it would kind of go on a little bit more, but it actually grows and it spreads the splinters uh, even more so you get these huge kind of fractals going on. And as you'll see, it creates a very unusual and I always thought it, it looked like blossom, but it could be utilized for, for loads of different things, for textures of a, of a scraggy mountain side or, or even on the face. I do use it a little bit later on on the face. Um, so let's see how this builds up. So on a new layer now I'm putting the pinks in and this is more for the blossom leaves. So a little scattered and again, see now the harder I press, the larger the, the petals, if you will. And you can go very vibrant with the colors and it still maintains the vibrancy even within these daub tools. So it's just trying to get a balance of what sat right round, right around his head and didn't kind of encroach upon the portrait too much, but enhanced it a little. So here we're just testing out some of the different brushes. So I'll just pause it here. So just in the corner there, you saw me testing out a red paintbrush. Um, and that was just to see which door next custom brush I was going to use. Um, and I selected the Impressionist, um, the Expressive Bristle, sorry, and it was the Gouache one. Now, there's two which are on the Expressive Bristle ones. There's a Gouache and the Cover. Cover, as you'd expect, fills in the gaps a little bit more. The Gouache leaves a little bit more space between it and a little bit more transparency. Um, and between those two, I, they're the two I mainly used on this portrait. And as you can see on his temple there, there's a brush stroke gone in and you'll see when I zoom in that it's just, it's, it's a little bit more draggy. It's not as much paint on there, but it, it just adds that texture as if you've just flipped a quite a dry brush across, across a dry canvas. Um, and you'll start to see it build up and you can really build shapes and textures along the way. So if we get it going again. And these are lovely to use. And like I said, there's, there's so many that, that Paolo's created. And you, what you can do is you can even take his brushes and then uh, in the settings, you can change them 
tweak them a little bit so you can add more loading, add, add more flow on them, and then save them as you wish to your own preferences. So I really wanted to convey this kind of light and dark, almost like a the chiaroscuro from a Baroque painting of, of the, the light hitting the back of his ear in that red glow, you know, sitting very starkly juxtaposing with the brightness of his cheek. And I thought that might create a little bit of um, movement and a bit of a drama on the petal background. So again, constantly zooming in, trying to get a little bit more detail. Don't be afraid to use the undo button and kind of go back and try things again. And there's a lot of that with with, with any kind of painting, you know, when I'm doing real oil painting, grabbing a, a cloth out and <laughs> rubbing back with the terps. The nice thing with this is there's, there's no waste of paint. You can try and keep trying as many times as you want until you get that right stroke, the right look you want. So now I'm just building up a little bit of depth. This is using a the Daub Weird Number no. 4 brush. Um, and I thought it was just nice for the jacket because it was quite soft and smoky uh, and could create these little flashes of strokes across it. And for the hat, again, because it's got that woolly texture. Quite often with my portraits, what I'll do is I'll pick a colour on one part of the screen and do a little flick of it on the other part of the screen. So I really like the oranges in his ear, so hence why We've got that um, little flash on his shoulder now, and it helps, and underneath his chin as well, and it helps the viewer just kind of be led into the area where you want them to be led into. It's an old kind of master's trick and um, where you'd kind of use different tools and colors and compositional shapes to draw the viewer in. Um, and I often like just doing a little expressive stroke of a color around the canvas and just adds a point of interest. I uh, and let's, you know, be a little bit more expressive and a little bit more unusual on things. We're putting in the final highlights and details. Again, with a thinner brush, but still using the daub ones. You'll see in a second I'll bring up the pencil layer on the top and this is to do the origami birds because obviously I've painted over some elements of that so here we go so I put the pencil layer on the top and because this is on a new layer I can just paint right over it not worry about staying within the lines because I can always erase it back in a little while so this is just using the standard oil painting brush I had a little bit of texture in a little while with the impressionist and the expressive bristle gouache. You can change the settings on the eraser tool if you so wish. You can make it softer, more transparent, you can make it kind of have a rougher edge. But for this one, because I wanted it's folded paper, I wanted it to have quite a crisp edge. So I just used it as standard. Again, adding some highlights, so the light's catching the side of the paper. Just checking if it's all squared up with the pencil lines. So what I've done is now I've duplicated that layer. And at first I thought I could be a little bit clever and just use a, a multiply on top to kind of change the colour. But as you can see, it wasn't really working. So again, new layer on top and I'm just going to use the duplicated origami bird underneath as my kind of template for the new one. I put the opacity down to 50% so I could see what I'm doing. Just putting in the light areas now and just building it up. It saved me drawing it again.
left a little bit of details on the origami and a few little highlights here and there, a few little brush strokes just to add a little bit of movement and a little bit of texture on the paper of the origami again using the gouache brushes then within the custom brushes I used the, the stock textures which is Particle Snow 2 and that just adds little paint splashes here and there again a little bit of movement, a little bit of texture and a bit of interest and then the final one I set a new layer and set it to multiply with a opacity of 50 and just selected a dark blue for the jacket and hat and a dark red for the skin and just to tie in the shadows together so you go over with a wide brush I'll just pause it for this next bit so you go over with a wide brush over the shaded areas and it just links the picture together so the shadows all flow correctly um, I find it kind of brings the painting out a little bit more if you if you do use a little multiply right at the end and then this last section you'll see on the custom brushes over on the left on the standard brushes sorry I've put the settings I click settings and I put the loading right up and you can see that brush has lots of lines and texture within it as if the paint uh, the brush has got so much paint loaded onto it so what I've done is I've created a, a layer right at the back and I'm going to be painting in the brush stroke layers and you'll see that it just lifts everything and so when you get this printed if you were to print this those paint brush strokes will look three-dimensional on there uh, and it's an amazing thing that ArtRage can do and it really does look effective and it saves you using a loaded brush to paint the actual picture in which as I said because there's so much paint on the canvas it can become unhand you can't handle it on unusable really almost because the paint's moving around so much and it could lead to a muddy picture so I quite like to use it flat flat paint on the at first but well, not very loaded paint and then underneath that's where you put your texture so you'll see I'll zoom in in a minute and you can see here we go the texture the strokes and you kind of follow the strokes that you've already used you can really build it up and then you'll see in a second as well I'll do the same for the background and I choose the tube of paint there on the left and I've just squirted in the paint out underneath the blossom and then with the canvas tool just pushing it about but leaving little raised and pitted areas and again it just gives that sense of realism that you have painted this with real paints and quite often when you'll print this off or if you were to print this off on canvases people will be fooled by this it, it does have a a pretty believable technique if you spend a long time kind of building up in certain areas and, and, and kind of really working with the brush strokes used you can create a pretty um, pretty believable effect and then at the end quick sign and we're ready to bring it into Photoshop okay okay so we're in the on the home stretch now and I've opened up our painting in Photoshop the nice thing with ArtRage is you can export it as a Photoshop file, as a ping, as a JPEG, whatever you really want to. Uh, but when you export it as a Photoshop file, as you can see on the right hand side, it keeps all your layers and multiplies and different you know, blending things all as you had them in ArtRage. It's fantastic for that. So here, what we want to do is really, we want to just add the finishing touches just to kind of I finally bring it to life I suppose I mean it, I'm perfectly happy with the painting now but I think we can do a little bit more so what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of texture in the background and see how that works so if I bring up my folder here we've got a few different things so these are my images and um, that I kind of brought from Pixabay here and we've got two textures that I'm going to bring in and again these are from Pixabay as well again it's definitely worth checking out this it's a great resource uh, for all kinds of photos but for textures as well so we're going to try this wall technique that looks a little bit unusual trying this but what I'll do is I'll bring it across and if I just bring it if I just plop it, plop it in there and we'll bring it to the top so we can see what we're doing with it so here it is and um, so control T to transform as you well know and we're just going to stretch it across I'm not too worried it's a high-res image we're just going to stretch it across to fit and what I want to do is I just want to see if this dark black area and the texture works behind the painting just to kind of see where his shoulder is just to see if, if it works better than the white so there we go click enter and 
we could put that as multiply for now, I suppose. And what we'll do is obviously it's not going to sit on top like that. So we're going to pop that right down to the bottom. Come on. All the way down, just on top of the paper texture. And there we go. So I quite like that now. That's kind of working for me. It kind of the flow around this from that sweeping brush stroke all the way around to his shoulder and these brush strokes with the dart behind it works a little bit better so we can toggle it on and off just to see yeah i'm quite happy with that but i'm not too happy with this little bit here so what i'll do is i'm just going to select the eraser tool okay and we're just gonna get rid of that bit because i think the white would work better because it marries up with these bits above it like that and Let's have a little toggle on and off again. Yeah, there's obviously a few patches where it's just coming through on the painting, not too bad. So you just erase those back. And as you can see, any little patches that we might have missed where the paper was coming through on the face particularly, we want to still have that. So again, we can just toggle it. And that looks fine to me. So I'm quite happy with that. But again, there's something we can do a little bit more, which you know you can put on a layer on the top of it. And um, so if we select up here onto the top layer, I'm going to try a paper texture on top and just see if that works. So again, go to your file, um, and I've got this nice ivory off-white paper texture, which is from Pixabay, and it's lovely, especially for kind of more solid coloured illustrations without the brush strokes in them. You can really add a, a nice paper effect, which when you're kind of on kind of closer scrutiny, you can really see. But we're going to just try it on this. So I brought it in. And again, don't worry too much about it. It's a big file. We can stretch it across the whole canvas. There we go. And obviously it's disappeared, so we need to multiply it. And I will pop the opacity down a little bit on that and let's go for 53 so again we can just toggle it on and off and it's only a very subtle difference but if i zoom in it's only very slight but you can see a little bit of kind of a bit more texture uh, i think you can see it a little bit more on the origami birds here yeah, it just loses that kind of zinginess, which made it a little bit unbelievable, I suppose, before, and just tones it down a little bit and sets it off. So I'm quite happy with that now. I think it, you know, we've got nice brush stroke texture from that um, the wall texture from before, which kind of ties in quite nicely, uh, and it's all hanging together quite well. So all that's left to do is just to save as. And as you well know, there's probably numerous kind of names that people give for these. And we'll call it complete. Uh, and we will save it there. Usually with changes, it's complete one, complete two, or finished one, finished two, until the final one, until you're completely happy with it. But I'm really happy with that. So hopefully you've got a little bit out of today's tutorial and um, can see what's achievable with ArtRage. And it's giving you a bit of a tempter to kind of give it a go and um, like i said it's it's a fantastic app and when utilized with photoshop it's certainly worth looking into and um, some of the effects you can get are amazing covering all kinds of artwork whether it's portraiture landscape or abstraction whatever you really want to do so i hope you've enjoyed it and got something out of it and um, hopefully i get to do another tutorial soon and um, get to speak to you all again thanks for watching and bye now